Gabrielle Chanel Fashion Manifesto at the Victoria and Albert Museum charts the evolution of Chanel's design style and the establishment of the House of Chanel. This video focuses on the evening designs in the comeback years, 1954 to 1971. Reminiscent of the stairs in Chanel's salon where she sat to watch the fashion shows. The mirrored staircase in the gallery is breathtaking. Each of these designs is from spring summer 1959. The dress on the left is black lace. The ensemble in the center is made of chenille. The dress on the right is silk, tulle, and satin. These designs from the 1960s are reminiscent of Chanel's earlier tiered skirts, but the fabrics are crisp, synthetic lame fabrics instead of soft chiffons like the dress on the right from 1930. And the skirts have step tiers instead of overlapping tiers. From autumn winter 1967, the silk and lame dress on the left is cut on the bias to enhance the geometric pattern design. The dress on the right is from spring summer 1965. It is fabricated in a lame by Bucal. The name of the lame is Agra. From the 1960s, Vogue called these designs dinner pajamas. They are more tailored than earlier years and made of brocades and lames. The jackets echo the styling of the cardigan jacket day suits, like the cocktail suits in the comeback years. From autumn winter 1965, this pajama suit, the jacket, blouse, and pants are silk and lame. Notice the turn back cuffs and button plackets on the sleeves. Here you can see the gold braid trim on the jacket collar and the moiré pattern on the silk tie. From the mid-1960s, this suit is silk, metal thread, gold piping, and sequins. The jacket has gold piping at all edges, five buttons, bound buttonholes, and only two pockets. In these details, you can see the top stitching at the edges. From autumn winter 1961, this dress is fabricated in a lame cloquet, which is soft and flexible. Chanel worked closely with Bucal, a Lyon-based textile manufacturer, and frequently chose their most innovative fabrics, which featured silk and lurex, or perhaps the new synthetic fibers such as Rhodia or Drelon and Orlon. This fabric is described as cloquet. It looks like fabrics we call matelassé. Like many of the designs in this gallery, each of these garments features the new lame fabrics, which are softer and drape better than the earlier metal lames. From Chanel's final collection in January 1971, this dress is lame organza and described as casual but elegant. Here you can see the intricate designs woven into the fabric. This is an incredibly large woven design. It would lead you to consider Chanel's input for the fabric designer. The belt is gilded metal, glass paste, and imitation pearl. From autumn winter, 1967, this dress and cape are lame cloquet, silk organza, gilded metal, and imitation pearl. Here you can see a detail of the lame cloquet. From autumn winter, 1967, this stunning dress skims a figure and buttons at center back. The dress is made of nylon mesh, rayon chenille, cellophane, crepe, silk chiffon, charmeuse, 
gilded metal, rhinestone, and imitation pearl. These dresses are from 1970. Both have horizontal bands of lame. The dress on the left is silk crepe. The dress on the right is silk chiffon. Here you can see the intricate designs on the lorex bands and the mitered corners on the neckline. The fabric design on this dress is more intricate than the previous dress. It is made of lorex, silk lace, and silk crepe. Lorex is a synthetic lame. Although Chanel was known for her tweed suits in the comeback years, her evening designs were always imaginative and innovative. These colorful dresses were fabricated in silk chiffon. The bodice on this dress is sheared close to the body, while the tiered skirt flows out in a rainbow of colors. Here you can see the voluminous scarf and the details of the shearing on the dress. From autumn winter, 1970, this dress is silk chiffon. From spring summer 1969, this dress is made of printed silk chiffon. The dress has a closely fitted bodice and a full gathered skirt. The sheared band just below the waist is an unusual and very attractive. All of the designs on the staircase are interesting. Sadly, it is difficult to see the details on the designs at the top. From spring summer 1960, this dress is lace embroidered with metal thread. Here you can see the intricate lace design. Notice the trim on the hem and at the waist, neckline and armholes. From autumn winter 1956, this bone dress is made of lace and tulle. The trumpet-shaped skirt has three ruffles at the hem. From 1965, this dress is silk and sequins. From spring-summer 1954, this dress is lace with metal thread embroidery. This unusual lace on the bodice and skirt yoke is paired with the chiffon skirt. Like many of Chanel's earlier designs, the dress back is as interesting as the front. From 1969, this trouser suit is wool boucle jersey. Sadly, the photo does not show the asymmetrical opening and the large patch pockets on the hips. From spring summer 1954, this design is fabricated in silk, tulle, silk lace, and metal. Placed at the top of the stairs, these dresses were difficult to see. The white dress is a classic shirtwaist design, fabricated in a cotton organdy embroidered with daisies. The dress and cape on the left is similar to a dress in my personal collection. This dress and the silk organza cape are in my collection. The dress fabric is covered in strips of silver lame stitched in a zigzag pattern to a base fabric. This is another example of Chanel's interest in experimenting with novelty fabrics. Here is one last look at the magnificent mirrored staircase gallery before we leave. It's almost time to say goodbye. Gabrielle Chanel, Fashion Manifesto at the Victorian Albert Museum in London was a fabulous exhibition. The exhibition charted the evolution of Chanel's design style and the establishment of the House of Chanel from the opening of her first millinery boutique in Paris in 1910 to the showing of her last collection in 1971. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Claire Schaefer.